Today's video is going to be about 10 tips that I found super helpful when I've been creating stuff in Blender to be 3D printed. So hopefully some of these tips will help you in your workflow to making some awesome 3D printed stuff. Now I'm gonna be using the latest version of Blender, Blender 4.3.2. Now the first thing you should always do before you start doing anything is adjusting your units. Because most of the time you're gonna need to know how big it is or how small it is. That's what she said. <laughs> so all you have to do is go over to our scene properties, head over to unit system, and then we're gonna change our unit scale to 0.001. And then we're gonna go to length in millimeters. Now you see that this goes gray and to bring that back, we just change our scale to 0.001. Okay, so now everything is in millimeters and we'll be able to adjust things in the correct size. So once you have your scaling set correctly, in order to measure stuff, you just use our lovely ruler tool here. And then we can measure it out. It is two millimeters, extremely small cube, but at least we know we need to make it bigger. Now the good thing about the measurement system here in Blender is that it is extremely accurate. So generally, whatever it measures in here, it's gonna be up to your printer to do the rest in terms of how accurate it's gonna print it. So here is another super useful feature that you'll want to enable before getting started, and that is enabling as many undo operations as you can, because sometimes you're gonna need them. So all you have to do is go to Edit, Preferences, go to System, and then crank the undo steps all the way up to 256. Now, I'm not sure if this will be enabled by default, but if it's not, you're gonna to wanna to set it to as many as possible. And this could very well save you. Okay, so here's another feature that I found super helpful and saves so much time. Sometimes you're gonna have multiple objects all combined together. So as you can see, we have two monkey heads. Now what I used to have to do is if I wanted to remove it, I'd have to go into wireframe mode and <laughs> try and meticulously select all the vertices that it was connected to. And I was like, this really sucks. And then I came across a YouTube video where they showed me a much simpler way to do it. So all you have to do is select a vertice and then hit Control L and it's gonna select everything else that's connected to that vertice. Now you'll see that the monkey eyes are not connected to this head. So all you have to do is hit Shift, click, Control L, Shift, click, Control L. And now we have the entire monkey head selected. And we can either just move this with G out of the way, or we can make it its entirely own object by hitting P and separating it by selection. And now we have successfully separated this object. So hopefully this is gonna save you a lot of time. <laughs> you don't have to do it the way that I did it previously. <sighs> Now in 3D printing, I found that I need to use the Boolean operation all the time. So here's what it does. Let's say I wanna turn this monkey head into a pot plant. So I just go add mesh cylinder. And then I'm gonna move the cylinder up to where I want it to go. And then all I have to do is using the Boolean tool, I can cut this cylinder shape out of the monkey head. So I select the monkey head first. We go to modifiers add modifier, search boolean. Um, now I tend to want to hit self intersection for these because if you don't then uh, there's a good chance that it won't work. And then select the object that we want to cut out and then we hit that and you'll notice nothing's happened. But all we have to do is select the object and then press H to hide it and there you go. That is the shape removed from the object. Super duper easy way to do it. Now the Boolean modifier acts in the opposite way as well. So if you wanna add it to the shape, instead of doing difference, you're gonna click union. And then that shape is going to merge into the monkey head. So if we select the shape again, hide it. Now that shape is part of the head. So if we hit apply, it's all connected together and becomes part of the geometry. Now, once you do connect two shapes together, you can't use that lovely feature I just spoke of with the control L because now it's all connected. So just keep in mind when you're doing Booleans to only apply them once you are 100% sure that's where it's gonna go. You can export files without applying the Boolean and it will export with the Boolean applied, which is cool. So I would say only apply the Boolean at the very end, or at least if you really have to apply it, then save a copy of the file, rename it to something else and move on because trying to undo a Boolean after you've applied it is very difficult. So I haven't applied the Boolean, but I can export it into the slicer and you'll see that it has exported with the Boolean applied. Let's just say you need to apply the Boolean in order to continue modeling your object because if you don't apply it, then you're not gonna be able to edit it. So let's apply 
and now that has become part of the object. And another cool feature about the Boolean modifier is that it actually adds as an excellent cutting tool. So if you want to remove a section of your print very easily without leaving a gaping hole there for your 3D printer to wig out about, you can simply just place an object over what you want to cut out. So once you have your cutting object in place, which is the cube, we select our primary object, add on the Boolean modifier, hit self intersection, and then use the eyedropper tool to hit this cube. Now, when we hide the cube, you'll see that there is a very large hole here, but this can be easily fixed by clicking hole tolerant. And now that's all filled in, and it's gonna be much easier for your 3D printer to recognize. So let's say you wanna make something really flat, like completely flat, and you don't wanna have to go through and do it manually because that just sucks. So what you can do is select the part of the head that you wanna make flat. So let's just select these four faces. And then we're gonna hit S and then Z and then zero. And that is now completely flat. Very, very easy. And you're not gonna have any deviations in the flatness. Now you can do that on any of the axes. So if you wanna do it over here, you're going to wanna do X. So S, X, and then zero. And then that is gonna make that edge completely flat. So being able to make personalized stuff is really cool and Blender makes it fairly easy for you to do that. So let's say we wanna engrave someone's name into the top of this head. So we'll go to add text. If we wanna edit it, we can just press tab and we can change the name to Gary. Now, if we want to adjust the font, we just go to our text tab, we go to our font, and then we can choose whatever font we want. This one, that looks nice. So at the moment, it is two-dimensional. So uh, there are a few different ways that you can make it 3D, but the first thing we need to do is convert it into a mesh. So we're gonna go object, convert to mesh, but that's gonna cause us a lot of issues when we try to turn it 3D. So we go to mesh, clean up, and then limited dissolve, and voila. It has cleaned up the mesh to a space where it is much more usable. So we've created the text, we've converted it to a mesh, and we've cleaned it up. Now we have to make it three-dimensional. Now you could just extrude it down, that is one way, or you could also add a solidify modifier. Modify, and then we go solidify, and then that can also extrude it as well. I'm not sure which way is better. I have been using the solidify modifier for this typically, but I'm pretty sure they both do the same thing. So just test it out and see what works better for you. And just by increasing or decreasing the thickness, we can see how thick it's gonna be. So I think that is a good amount of thickness. Now, if you're wanting to emboss or engrave this text into anything, you will need to apply this. And once you do apply it, there's no going back. Unless you control Z, but that's only good for 256 undos. So if you do a whole bunch of changes and you realize, oh, it's too thick or it's not thick enough, then you're gonna have some issues. So what you could do is just duplicate it, put that over there, just in case you need it, and then we'll go apply. So now that we have applied it, you can see that it has updated the geometry. Over on this one, it still only has that top part. So now we can use this to engrave or emboss, or in bevel, or whatever you want. So let's say we wanna cut the name out of the head. So we just move it down to there, and then we're gonna use our Boolean tool, the one that we used before. Click on the head, add modify, Boolean, self intersection, and then we're gonna click the text. And then we're gonna press H for hide. And there you go, there is the text, nicely engraved. Hmm. But let's say you wanna make it part of the model instead of removing it from the model. Very easy. All you have to do is change this Boolean operation to union. And now it is going to be a part of the model. So if we hit apply, this is now part of the head. If we move it, it all moves together. Very nice. So one of the things that I really love about Blender is that it has um, a whole bunch of add-ons that you can install to make your 3D modeling life a lot easier, especially if you're wanting to 3D print the stuff you're making. So if you want to install them, you go to Edit, Preferences, and then Add-ons. And then you can see all the ones that you can install. Some of these you're gonna have to install manually, and I'll show you how to do that. So if you just head over to Blender and hit up their extensions part of their website, you'll find a whole bunch of really useful add-ons that you can install. One of them being the mesh repair tools. Uh, and installing it is super duper easy. Just click this, 
and then drag and drop this into Blender. Now this will only work if you have Blender 4 and above. If you have any version prior to that, this method will not work and this app will also probably not work. As you can see, it's only compatible with 4.2 and newer. So make sure you've updated to the latest software before you try and install anything and just check the compatibility of the app. And once it's installed, you'll be able to find it in here. So a lot of the add-ons will be added over in this section, this toolbar. So this is the 3D print toolbox. And this allows you to fix up a bunch of issues before you export the model. So basically just select your model and hit check all and then it's gonna pop up all the problems that it has if you're wanting to 3D print this thing. So once we enter edit mode using tab, if we click on this, it will show us these problems that it has. And then you can go in and adjust whatever you need to adjust. So all these overhangs here are probably not gonna print very well without supports. And if you want to print it without supports, then these are some things you need to fix by making the angles not so steep. So as you can see, this one is highlighted, but if we were to edit it and move it in, and we move it around to, I think that is a much more acceptable angle. If we hit check all, and then go to our overhang faces, you'll see that that is now not highlighted anymore, which means it is good to go. So this is super helpful showing you the problems with your model, what you need to fix before you export it to your slicer, because there's nothing worse than exporting it, finding out it has a problem, putting it back in, exporting it, put it back in. It's very painful. And another great feature about this toolbox is that sometimes when you're modeling whatever it is, gaps could appear in the geometry, and sometimes you won't even be able to see them. But I've just deleted some of the faces here just for demonstration purposes and you'll see that as soon as I hit make manifold they're all fixed because if there's holes when you export it your slicer is going to wig out so once you've checked everything you've made it manifold then all you have to do is go down and hit export and it's done this 3d print toolbox is really really good and in order to get it just go on to the blender website for extensions get add-on and drag and drop so we did touch on the limited dissolve feature earlier, but sometimes you're just going to want to clean up the geometry a little bit because there's just too many vertices everywhere. So let's say we want to make this a little less chaotic, this ear. So we just go to mesh, clean up, limited dissolve, and then we just drag it. Just remember, the more you do this, the more it is going to destroy the object. So this is going to be case by case scenario, but I use this quite a lot when there's just too many vertices to work with and I just need kind of a, a flat face. So right here, if I just wanted to have one face instead of four, I go boop, 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 and then I can select it and move it around as much as I want. Whee! But just make sure you don't go too overboard, otherwise you're gonna start messing with the rest of the model. Now, if you want to make it specific to a certain part, then you can, of course, select it. If we just go into wireframe mode, and we're just gonna select this part here. So I'm just pressing B for box select. B, and then wee. So we're gonna do a limited dissolve. And now it just affects the ear. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show you isn't really a tip, but uh, more of a helpful thing that you might be able to use if you want to visualize your 3D print before you actually print it. So basically you just open up the blend file that will be in the description and import the model that you want to apply this texture to. So we have a cool Batman bust. And then we go over to shading and then we simply just hit 3D print template and it should go on here like that. And once it's in, you can adjust the layer line thickness. So if you want them really thin or you want them really spaced apart that's up to you and you can also adjust the color so if you're going to be printing it in a different color you can have a look at what it will look like in the real world obviously i don't know how much precision you can get with this value here in terms of if it's like 0.2 or 0.16 or whatever it is but it'll hopefully give you a general gist of it and plus it just looks pretty cool there's of course many other tools and tips with Blender that can help you in your 3D modeling journey. I might make another video when I come up with some more. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.